Welcome to Aussie Indian and it gives me great pleasure to once again welcome Dr. Pranav Pandya to Sydney. Doctor, welcome. Thank you very much, Rajnanji. And it's uh, my pleasure also to be here after. No, I have been in between here in 2009 also, but uh, again with you. Thank you very much, Doctor. And uh, of course, uh, uh, I was there when you came here about eight years back at uh, the Castle Hill ground. Uh, would you be having similar discourses this time as well and the celebrations? Yes, I have been delivering uh, similar type of discourses because I have been to Brisbane earlier than this. This trip has been from Brisbane to Sydney. And uh, the function which we organized in, 19, in uh, 2005 yes. is being organized next year in Easter holidays in yes. Brisbane. Yes. That will be uh, from 18th to 20th April right. 2014. So my lectures have been there also, and, but I had delivered lectures on varieties of the topics. Spirituality in your health, then the integrative science of therapy, integrative therapies, stress management, time management, man management, yoga and healing, all these concepts I have been talking. Of course, uh, our viewers would be very interested in knowing you are uh, actually a medical practitioner. You were trained in Western medicine. Uh, you have a MBBS and MD. How come you uh, started getting interested in Eastern type of healing processes? Uh, you see, uh, what happened uh, basically after doing your MD, you get uh, used to the various patterns of the Western system of therapy. I went to USA and uh, I was in Colum Columbia uh, Institute of Medical Sciences and uh, my guru wanted me back to India. So he called me back in 1975 after my MD and he told me that you have to stay with me and you have to establish the relationship between the two, the modern medicine and the Eastern uh, systems of therapy and Eastern uh, philosophy. So study Eastern philosophy with me. Now, after studying for 10 years in medical school, it was very difficult for me to study again. But I studied Vedanta, I studied all the systems of medicine, all the systems of the Ayurveda, herbal healing, meditation, practices of yoga. And all these I started practicing myself also. Now I am 62 and I feel that that thing brought a change in my life. That, that occurred at the age of 26, 27. And now I feel that now I am a teacher to masses, uh, preaching people all over the world and they listen to a scientist. Gurudev said, my master said, that you, you, people, people will listen to you first because you are a doctor, you are a scientist and you are practicing yourself. That's why the, uh, this particular thing, it was difficult for me to understand initially but gradually, gradually it became a part of my life. One of the things which I have found I myself, uh, I am benefited immensely by practicing meditation and yoga myself. I've been doing it for the last 35 years. And as I was telling you, I also had the uh, privilege of getting to know Vivekananda Yoga Anusandhan Samsthan in Bangalore. And having done that, it's been extremely difficult to convince the Western society of the benefits of meditation, uh, whichever type of meditation. And they're looking for evidence-based research on uh, the benefits of meditation. Uh, how come that hasn't been progressed so far? No, no, uh, it is not so that uh, uh, it has not been progressed. It has actually. A lot of work was done by Keith Wallace, um, the Maharshi Mahesh Yogi Institute, uh, long back, about 20 years back. And Dr. K. N. Urupa, uh, who was uh, one of my guide also in Banaras Hindu University. He's no more now, but he was MD in medicine and he was a person who went into yoga. He has written textbook on that, yoga and meditation. So what I believe that uh, the philosophy of the meditation and the theory and practice of meditation has been now substantiated very authentically on the basis of modern medicine. Meditation enhances the alpha waves, uh, production of the alpha waves. Meditation causes alertness. Because we are seated in an air-conditioned atmosphere, we can feel the air-conditioning. But somebody wants to see air condition, air, how does it look like, the waves of the air conditioning, I cannot show it to you. So the influence of the meditation can be experienced and the bef before and after meditation, what are the changes in body physiology, uh, neurohormones, 5-HT, serotonin, 
endorphin, encephalins, all these are changed, all these are enhanced, means those responsible for the inner pleasure and harmony, they are enhanced and those who are responsible for stress, they are reduced. So this particular evidence is now available in plenty. And that is now uh, convincing a lot of people all over the globe, especially scientific community, that now the meditation is being agreed upon by all the people that this particular thing should be done by all, irrespective of religion. Uh, then, Dr. Pandya, is it that we haven't uh, publicized enough about this evidence-based research? I, I, I believe so, that we have not been able to do that. But now I am bringing out a journal, a scientific journal, which will be of standard of uh, like Gen General of American Medical Association or General of the Association for the Meditation like this. Uh, I am going to bring out a monthly circulation very soon. I am publishing in my magazine Akhand Jyoti, which is being published since last 77 years. So I n wish now that in all languages we should publish it, we should put it on website. I have put it on my website, awgp.org. But now more and more research work because I have got 97 PhDs under me uh, in my university, Dev Sanskrit University. So all these works are now being put gradually, gradually. Uh, because uh, the Western people, they want to know the authentic research, authentic PhD. So I am just filtering out those PhDs which are a um, little bit philosophical, theoretical, and those which are based on the practical evidences. And I have been able to come to this conclusion that this is enough proof. Uh, in Japan, in China, in Russia, in UK, I have been able to produce these results and they are agreeing. And there is a forum developing all over the world now which believes in this thing now. Dr. Pandey, do you think that uh, in the coming years there will be more awareness of uh, the uh, benefits of uh, Eastern therapies and they will ad adopt that because Western culture basically is adventurous. They want to, uh, unlike the Eastern culture which uh, adopts things pretty slowly. Western culture absorbs, like I have been here for 25 years. When I came, there were only a handful of yoga and meditation schools. But in every suburb now in Sydney, there is a yoga meditation school. Do you think this will catch up in the Western society? I think it will catch up. Uh, I'm very hopeful, I'm very optimistic that when it will catch up, it will be uh, running up like anything. But only one thing is, the quacks are developing in the shadow of meditation in the shadow of chakra therapy or the reiki or pranic healing. These quacks have to be taken care of. Authentic people who are well versed in science, only they should be given privilege. I think uh, this particular thing should be done by, a monitoring should be done by the people, scientists people, and we should form a body who should be able to present these things. Uh, Dr. Pandey, actually you have answered my next question. I was going to ask you, some people have exploited it commercially and with the result what has happened is that the people have lost faith in it after seeing, as you said, that some of the people who don't know the depth of, don't have the depth of knowledge have practiced it or tried to practice it or preach it without understanding the, uh, the actual essence of it. And is that, uh, is there any way we can cure this school of thought from those uh, people who are exploiting it for their own personal uh, greeds? You see, uh, this has become a little type of uh, professional approach to the uh, and marketing approach and because of this globalization and everything. And people need tranquility. So anybody can get deceived by the advertisement which is done by the people. I think uh, there should be some filtering body and people should consider them as the authority. And I think this is going to happen because people are crazy to get peace, inner peace. Uh, Gita says, Ashantasya kutah sukham. The main at unpeace will not get happiness. Now everybody is running after happiness. But when, how do, do, will, will they get the happiness if there is no peace inside? So I think meditation is the only way to peace. And um, I, when I lecture, when I deliver my presentations, when I uh, talk to people, uh, I, I practice meditation myself and I ask them to practice it. Every day I uh, conduct three types of meditation and I tell them that these things are to be practiced every day and even if you have got 15 minutes, you just do it and start uh, using them as a regular, regular practice for about 15 days or 13 days, 30 days, then only it will be benefited. So that patience has to be kept by everyone. 
secondly the filter has to be done somewhere that this thing and once it is there i think the western society will run after the meditation well once again you have answered my next question i must say uh, it is western society is looking for quick fix if uh, i've got a headache or a flu i take a high powered aspirin tablet i want to get rid of it in the next half an hour or 15 minutes and meditation doesn't work like that what kind of advice would you give to the westerners who are looking for this quick fix solutions you see in meditation also there are instant meditation instant relaxation uh, the dead body posture uh, you see i have been running like anything since 1st january there have been a chain, chain of programs all over the world i have been travelling to three countries in india i am travelling to various pockets of the areas and what i feel is that uh, that instant uh, relief therapy has to be understood by people five minutes 10 minutes of meditation even if you are seated in the car you just relax for a while if you learn the art of relaxation the mental equipoise the physical relaxation and the muscular relaxation the mental tranquility they all start coming to you so i think the uh, this will come but it should not be seconds it will be around few minutes five to 10 minutes and the consulting psychiatrists uh, in fact they call it as uh, mindfulness uh, is it the same thing no it is a little bit different alertness of the state alert, alert state of the mind alert state of the mind if you if you if you say the word because my son is psychiatrist so i keep on discussing lot of things with him uh, he is mrcp and uh, he is very um, he, he arguments like anything with me he argues that this is not uh, scientific this is not scientific so he it teaches me how to explain him properly so i think this is particularly the thing that the alertness of the mind all the time being alert is the state of meditative posture and for that you don't need to sit in a particular state you can be lecturing you can be walking and you can be sleeping all the time in meditative state so that 24 hour meditation can take place sir well i my as a practitioner of med- meditation myself i have found that uh, meditative techniques are unique to each individual like uh, if there are 6 billion people i think we have 6 billion ways of uh, imagining god uh, similarly is a meditative technique similar that you develop your own technique uh, based on the principles yes i think uh, you should have a master guru who can guide you um, or a teacher who can guide you uh, which technique is best for you sometimes uh, we do our own we choose our own but that that may not be a uh, good for me that may be late starter so if early starter you have to choose you can start cho- choosing from the uh, with the help of master but in today's world you don't get master so easily so who who will be the master the books as in sikh religion guru gan sahab is the guru so similarly the uh, treatises like patanjali yog sutra and various textbook or medicines or in the meditation and other practices they are very good uh, you can keep on reading and you can keep on practicing gradually you learn the practice gradually coming to you have started world gayatri parivar what uh, motivated you to start that organization uh, you see my guru started it in 1926 long back but uh, it became global after i started uh, traveling all over the world and uh, the first journey was made by my guru in 1971 72 73 to the african countries continents and then i maintained it and i think that uh, the whole global people they need the the theory of and practice of spirituality right. and scientific spirituality especially scientific explanation of the spirituality But this particular practice is now enhancing and uh, now we have got about more than you can you can imagine about 4 to 5 million people all over the globe right. who are attached to uh, uh, not only nris but the russians were of russian origin americans of american origin these people australians of australian origin they are getting attached to the organization very fast uh, indians are about 90 million uh, our, our indian people 9 crore all over the world and that is all world gathering everywhere and of course you also started this university which is uh, dev samskriti university uh, can you tell us a bit more about that? we started it in uh, 2002 and the concept was to develop the young generation with uh, shiksha and vidya education and knowledge together you see the education is there but knowledge is not there 
So education is bombardment of information, network and other things that you can get through internet also. But the knowledge has to be percolated in the education. So I started about 10, 15 disciplines in which the yoga with five streams of knowledge and yoga in human consciousness, yoga in therapy, therapeutic aspect of yoga, yoga in mental health, yoga and uh, management, all these concepts we started. Right. And it is running very smoothly and we are producing children who are going to various universities and uh, today's adults, today's adolescents, they listen to the language of adolescent. So they are becoming the messengers, our messenger, uh, not only of yoga, but Indian culture. Dev Sanskriti means divine, culture means, Sanskriti means culture, divine culture. Our culture was divine and our uh, rishis and sages and seers, they communicated it to everybody. But this is particularly that concept which we are saying. And of course, uh, the future of uh, all the good work that you are doing is probably going to depend on the younger generation who are coming through. What kind of advice would you give to our viewers, especially the younger generation? Uh, to, to the younger generation, I like to say one thing that uh, uh, try to be away from vices and try to be away from various uh, habits, various uh, addictions uh, which uh, waver the attention, which keep in the path of the, which come in the path of your adolescence your teenage and adolescence and uh, if you if you understand the meaning of that at this particular stage of life then perhaps you'll be able to do a lot in the future because you got so much of potential you got so much of energy in india our uh, total 650 million people are youngsters and uh, similarly here I, I go to i went to sydney university for a lecture i went to maguire university yesterday for a lecture so many youngsters so many younger generation they got immense energy uh, this energy has to be channelized in a proper way if these people, they all learn yoga and meditation, irrespective of uh, uh, taking it as a Hindu religion based, taking it as beyond religion, then I think the youngst younger generation can become an asset to us globally. Because globally we are having a lot of younger generation. But uh, people are aging gradually and we have to stop that aging process and we have to uh, keep the nurturing process of this younger generation running. And, uh, they are oozing with hormones, they are oozing with blood inside them, they are oozing with enthusiasm and flow of thoughts. And they, these thoughts have to be channelized properly. Dr. Pranav Pandya, have a pleasant stay in Sydney and thanks for talking to us. Thank, Thank you very much.